G'day guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to permanently join a cable. So in this scenario you've either got a damaged cable like this or you've just got two cable ends that you need to join. Cut the damage right out of the cable. So your cable should look like that now and the damaged part should be gone. So I've got some 2.5mm TPS here, the one on earth, so it's red, black, green. Now I'm going to show you guys how to permanently join this cable the proper way. Gear you will need some Utilux crimpers, some Utilux crimps, you will need some heat shrink. If this cable join was going to be anywhere other than inside a house, so if this cable was outside running conduit, it would be put in this Raychem thick wool heat shrink which has an epoxy on the inside of it that melts to the cable and creates a seal around the cable itself. And then of course you'll need a torch to shrink the heat shrink down with. Now you can use a lighter but that takes all day so I wouldn't bother. I just use map gas because you can weld sulfos with it. Always use the proper crimpers for this job. These ones here when you crimp them up, they automatically release when you hit the right torque on them. So when you have crimped them up effectively, that wee tab on top here will release the mechanism. The other thing you want to do is get the right size crimps for the job. These ones here are 2.5mm crimps. Right, first thing you want to do Strip the ends back relative to how much room you got to work with. Sometimes cables don't have much slack on them. So here in this scenario, I've gone about 80 mil, and I'll do the same with the other end of the cable that I want to join it onto. So rule number one is using the correct crimpers to crimp the crimps. Number two is to always stagger these ends. So what I mean by that is we'll cut the black off here we'll cut the green off in a place that won't be if the insulation gets compromised one day it won't affect that so we'll cut the green off about here where my finger is and then the red can just stay that length so now we'll marry this end up with it so the black, the longest black stays that length Straighten all the ends out. So where those two black ends meet up, cut the greens back so that they will meet up as well. So I'm going to cut this green where my thumbs caught it. So now we've staggered the black and the green. Now we'll hold the green there and do the red. So red, I'm going to cut right there where my thumb is. So now your cable ends should look like that. Next thing you're going to want to do is strip the ends off. Now when you strip them back, you'll see a wee dent in the middle that marks the middle mark of these. You want to get the copper flush up to the middle. So if you have to, just measure off the middle mark here to the outside of the cable. So line it up like that. And then we'll strip this off. Rightio, so the next step here, you can either cut heat shrink to length or put crimpers on one end. I'm going to start crimping one end of the cable. Slide the crimps on. Make sure that all of the copper cores go on the inside of it and that there's none left out. So there's none that bend out. Get your crimpers. Select the right setting. So my 2.5mm is in this gap here. So I slide it into there. And then I crimp. The part that I want to crimp down on this crimper is right here. About only a few mil off the end. So about 3 or 4 mil in. And then I'll do another crimp here at about 8 mil in. So crimp down, the torque release 
releases. Now I'm going to crimp one more back here. So just like that. Do a wee pull test on it. Make sure it's going nowhere. If it slides off, start again. Cut it off. Well, if it slides off, you should be right. Start again with the new crimp. The earth one, same again. And then the phase. Alrighty. So as you can see, they are staggered out. And they're never going to be able to touch each other. Now the next thing you want to do is get the right sized heat shrink that will slide over the crimps and cut it so that there's a wee bit hanging over each side probably about half a centimetre at, at the very least I'm going for almost a centimetre on either side so I'll cut the heat shrink down to where my thumb is and now I'll cut two more of the same length for the other crimps so just like that now what I'll do is slide one on the phase, one on the earth, and the last one I'll slide on the neutral of the other cable. So it's not going to fall off because it's the long end on this end, whereas I can't even fit it over the short end on this end. Two of the cables together, it doesn't matter what ones, because then that will give you a reference to how long this is. Get some bigger heat shrink and give it about two or three centimeters on each side of the join and then cut it off don't crimp this one up yet until you've got the heat shrink on so now we'll slide the heat shrink over the whole lot of them and pull it back down the cable until these ends are visible now the next part make sure you've got all of your heat shrink on the cable ends before you do this last join Put the two phases together first, same again on the other side, we do two crimps, one, two, now a good thing with these crimps is try not to get them close to each other, try and separate them apart like that, it creates a stronger connection, then do a wee pull test. Make sure your cables aren't going to slide out of the crimp you've just crimped them into. Which is very important because this is a permanent join. Right now the earth one. Bend that out of the way. Same again, pull test. Last of all, the neutral. Now see how these cores are cut on an angle here? What you want to do is make sure they're cut straight. So what you might have to do is strip a wee slight bit more off there. Just very slightly. Because you've got to be careful. Because if you strip too much then you've got to adjust the sizing of all of the other cores as well. Crimp that one up. Right, next part is melting the heat shrink. So centre your heat shrink over the join. Give it a feel with your thumbs. And line it up right in the centre. Get your gas torch. Make sure you're not going to burn yourself, or set the wall on fire, or burn whatever else is in the vicinity. Just face the gas torch away from any burn, from anything that you might singe. Now when heating heat shrink, always start heating from the centre outwards. It's just a good habit to be in, because as soon as you start heat shrinking, rake him with glue in it. If you heat shrink from one side, that's going to stick and then you've got this whole run where you can get bubbles in there and the bubbles will go nowhere. So if you start heating in the middle and gluing it in the middle, you halve the distance that the air has to travel to escape. So I wouldn't worry if you singe it a wee bit, like this. See how I've done there? Don't worry about that. And don't worry if you singe the heat shrink a wee bit. As long as it's shrunk down and it's unable to move. Because as you can see, it's shrunk down around the edge of the crimp. Now the next thing is you want to slide your outer sheath over the whole lot. And then you heat it down again, starting in the middle. 
Don't hold it in one place for too long. Rotate the flame right the way around the cable, just like I'm doing. And that's how you join a cable permanently. After you liven it, you want to check that the polarity is right, that phase neutral and earth are around the right way. And if you're on the extra cautious side, you might want to do an insulation resistance test. Alright, cheers for watching guys. We'll catch you later.